if you've been diagnosed with homocystinuria or you're looking after someone who has, we're here to help you get to know more about your diagnosis. Knowing more about your condition is one of the best ways to understand what's going on in your body. Know what you can expect and know how treatment will help. You may be relieved at getting your diagnosis. Remember, this is only the first step on your journey. And you'll need to actively manage your homocystinuria to reduce the risk of further health problems in the future. In this video, we'll talk first about homocystinuria in general terms, and then go into more detail on the three most common forms, those that are caused by cystothionine beta synthase deficiency, severe methylene tetrahydrofolate reductase deficiency, a problem in cobalamin metabolism known as cobalamin C disease. Don't worry if you're unsure which type of homocystinuria applies to you. You can check with your doctor. They can confirm your diagnosis for you. So what is homocystinuria? The short answer is homocystinuria is an inherited metabolic disorder. But what does this mean? Metabolic disorders occur when chemical reactions in your body are disrupted in some way and they don't work properly. This disruption is linked to the genes that you inherited from your parents. This particular inherited metabolic disorder causes high levels of an amino acid called homocysteine to build up in your body. We all need homocysteine to make energy for our cells and to produce other chemicals important for growth and development. Proteins in our food are broken down into amino acids which are small enough to be absorbed into the bloodstream. Although hundreds of amino acids exist, the human body only needs about 20 different amino acids to grow and function properly. And homocysteine is one of them. Homocysteine is an amino acid that the body produces from another amino acid called methionine. Normally, there's very little homocysteine circulating in our body as it's quickly converted into another amino acid called cysteine. Or it gets recycled back into methionine, ready to be reused to build other proteins. When high levels of homocysteine build up, it can be harmful and can affect different parts of your body, including your eyes, skeleton, brain and blood vessels. There are lots of chemical reactions going on in our bodies all the time, and enzymes help speed up or catalyze these chemical reactions. Enzymes attach themselves to certain molecules, such as homocysteine, and alter them in very specific ways, allowing them to be quickly converted into other chemicals, such as cysteine. Our body needs a number of different enzymes to help it process homocysteine. When you have homocystinuria, you either don't make these enzymes or you don't make enough of them or they don't work properly. Our bodies know how to make these enzymes because the recipe is held in our genes, more specifically in a pair of genes. One passed on or inherited from your mother and the other from your father. Homocystinuria occurs when both copies of the gene don't work correctly. This is called autosomal recessive inheritance. Some enzymes also need helper molecules called coenzymes or cofactors to work properly and many vitamins act as helper molecules in our bodies. The enzymes involved in homocysteine reactions need three vitamins, vitamin B6, B12 and folate to work correctly. If any of these are not available or there's not enough available, your body can also have problems either converting homocysteine to cysteine or recycling it back to methionine. So to quickly summarize the information we've talked about so far, homocystinuria is an inherited metabolic disorder our bodies need enzymes and their helper molecules to help it process homocysteine. When these processes don't work properly, high levels of the amino acid homocysteine 
and other chemicals can build up in your body. High levels of homocysteine can be harmful and can affect different parts of your body. There are many different forms of homocysteinuria, each having its own causes, health issues and treatments. We'll now briefly talk about the three most common forms, starting with homocysteinuria due to cystothionine beta synthase deficiency. This is the most common form of homocysteinuria, and although it has lots of different names, it's often referred to as classical homocysteinuria or just homocysteinuria. This form of homocysteinuria is caused by a fault or mutation in the CBS gene. The CBS gene holds the instructions needed to make the enzyme called cystothionine beta synthase. If the gene is faulty, then either none or only small amounts of the CBS enzyme is produced and the body is said to have a CBS deficiency. The CBS enzyme is needed to convert the homocysteine, along with other amino acid serine, to cystothionine before it can then be converted to cysteine. The CBS enzyme needs the help of vitamin B6 to work correctly. When the CBS enzyme is not produced or isn't working properly, it can lead to high levels of homocysteine in your blood and urine because homocysteine can't make cystothionine and it starts to build up. It can cause low levels of cystothionine and cysteine in the blood because homocysteine can't be processed to make these two amino acids. And it can cause high levels of methionine in blood because unused homocysteine is converted back to methionine and it starts to build up. The parts of the body most commonly affected are the eyes, skeleton, brain, and the blood vessels. Health problems characteristic of this form of homocysteinuria typically include lens dislocation. This is often the first symptom noticed. Unusually tall stature with long slender fingers and toes and long arms and legs. Development problems and seizures and blood clots. The second form of homocysteinuria also has lots of different names, but is often referred to as just MTHFR deficiency. This form of homocysteinuria is caused by faulty MTHFR genes. The MTHFR gene holds the instructions needed to make the enzyme called methylene tetrahydrofolate reductase, MTHFR. This enzyme helps regulate the levels of homocysteine in your body. Folate, the natural form of vitamin B9, is needed to help recycle homocysteine back to methionine. The MTHFR enzyme helps your body convert folate to the active form 5-MTHF through a process called methylation. If the body can't convert folate properly, homocysteine can't be recycled back to methionine. When the MTHFR enzyme is not produced or is not working properly, it can lead to high levels of homocysteine in blood and urine because homocysteine is not being recycled back to methionine and low or normal levels of methionine in the blood. Homocysteine can't be recycled and no or little methionine is being made. The parts of the body most commonly affected by MTHFR deficiency are the brain and central nervous system and the blood vessels. Health problems characteristic for this form of homocysteinuria typically include development problems and seizures, blood clots and poor muscle tone. The third form of homocysteinuria also has lots of different names, but is often referred to as cobalamin C disease, or just cobalamin C. This form of homocysteinuria 
is caused by a faulty MMACHC gene. In cobalamin C disease, there's a problem with how cobalamin from food is converted into its two active forms by your body. These active forms of cobalamin act as helper molecules or cofactors for two different enzymes in two different processes. The first process is where homocysteine is recycled back to methionine using the enzyme methionine synthase. Methionine synthase needs the right form of cobalamin and folate to work properly. When there is a problem with cobalamin metabolism, it can lead to homocysteinuria with high levels of homocysteine in blood and urine because homocysteine is not being recycled back to methionine and low or low to normal levels of methionine in the blood because homocysteine can't be recycled and no or little methionine is being made. Second process is where the enzyme methylmalonyl CoA mutase converts methylmalonyl CoA into succinyl CoA. This process also needs the right form of cobalamin to work properly. When there is a problem with cobalamin metabolism, it can lead to another condition called methylmalonic acidemia with high levels of methylmalonic acid in blood because methylmalonyl CoA is not being converted into succinyl CoA. The parts of the body most commonly affected by cobalamin C are the eyes, physical features, the brain and the central nervous system, and the blood vessels. Health problems characteristic for this form of homocysteinuria typically includes development problems, seizures, and mental deterioration. Eye problems, such as involuntary eye movements and changes to the retina. Blood problems, such as anemia or clots. Summarising what we've talked about in this video, homocysteinuria is an inherited metabolic disorder. Enzymes and their helper molecules are needed to process homocysteine and methionine. When these processes don't work properly, high levels of homocysteine and other chemicals build up in your body and can be harmful. There are many different forms of homocysteinuria, each with their own specific causes and symptoms. The three most common forms of homocysteinuria are those due to problems converting homocysteine to cysteine, CBS deficiency, problems processing vitamins involved in converting homocysteine back to methionine, MTHFR deficiency involving folate metabolism, cobalamin C disease involving vitamin B12 metabolism. Hopefully we've helped you get to know your homocysteinuria a bit more, so you can feel more confident when talking to your healthcare team, your family or friends. Remember, it's important to ask questions about anything you don't understand. Don't be afraid to ask your doctor or other health team members to repeat things or to write information down for you. Thank you.